Esther chapter 4 and verse 14. If you've arrived there or you're looking at the screen, shout amen. amen. For if, to, if thou altogether holdest thy peace, Mordecai speaks to Esther. And he says, if you hold your peace at this time, then shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Tonight we are here with purpose and destiny dangling on each and every one of us. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them this evening's sermon title. Tell them someone is hanging on you. Look at your neighbor. It's 2022, so your other neighbor's offended. Look at them and say, someone is hanging on you. Point your finger at yourself. For the most part, your finger points at your heart. It's not pointing at your face. I would identify you by your face, but your finger points at your heart. Because you know the real you is not what you put up here. The real you is where your finger is placed. And tonight, God is going to speak to the real you. I want you to turn that finger into a hand and lay it on the heart that is you. And I want you to bow your head right now and close your eyes and pray for the most challenging person you know. I want you to pray for you. Father, right now, I open my heart and I'm prepared to receive what you would say to me. I, dear God, come into this room needing a word from you. I need to be challenged. I need to be convicted. I need to be encouraged. Father, but above all things, when I exit this building, let it be said that I was changed by the power of the anointed word of God. I pray for every young man and woman in this place, whether they're in a battle or on a mountain high, that, Lord, your word, Father, would do exactly what it is as we needed to do. As we leave this place, we will always give you praise in anticipation for what you will do the remainder of this conference. In Jesus' name we pray. And as one body we say, in Jesus' name, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. And this word was with God and the word was God. The word, word is logos. In the beginning was logos. It has different meanings, but in, in context of it, it's plan. In the beginning, God had a plan. This, young people, lets me know that prior to speaking worlds into existence, prior, prior to creating all that we see and are, God had a plan. The universe, the world, you and I, are not created. We were not created on some whimsical idea, afterthought. It wasn't happenstance or chance, but it was divine planning that went into the construction of all that we see and all that we are. David said, in my mother's womb, you knit me together. He said in Psalms, you know my frame. You must resist, young people, the, the, the modern idea that, that your science teacher, Hollywood, or politicians are telling you that, that you are an accident, that somehow you are the result of a little amoeba that turned into a little fish that flopped up on a seashore, turned into a monkey, the tail fell off, and here you are. And then the world's surprised when y'all act like animals. Well, no wonder they're burning buildings to the ground. They've been told they're animals their whole lives. But I've just come to tell you the truth because they're all liars. The truth is you're not the result of a little fish. You are here because divine hands spent holy time in your mother's womb and he knit. That means he finally put together every part of your being. The way you look is because God wants you to look that way. The way you are, your personality type is because God intended for you to have that. There is divine purpose in your life. I got an amen and a clap my hands. Let's get to the good part. If that's not good enough for you, it's going to be a long week, baby. I've come to tell you, God has a plan for your life. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You're not just something that randomly appeared in the cosmos, but God has divine purpose, fearfully, wonderfully made. You are formed with a mission. 
intentionality by our creator to create you. And as I read the story of Esther, I love this story and it's preached much. She is a woman that we can say at the conclusion of her life fulfilled God's purpose for her life. And as I look at it, I see that she prepares herself. She's willing to be patient, but when the time comes, she also performs and does what God calls her to do. It's known to most all of you that attended Sunday school, Esther, Esther. The children of, of, of Israel and the people of God have been in captivity for many years. The name of the king holding them in captivity is Ahasuerus. He is called in the beginning of this ch- book together a great feast where all 127 provinces would gather. All the governors from these areas would come together for a giant feast. It wasn't just a one day thing. It would go on for weeks and sometimes months. And at the conclusion of this festival, they would stay up all night, days in, on end, drinking, getting drunk, and, uh, and, and all kinds of debauchery. It was in this state that the king calls for his queen. The queen at the beginning of the book of Esther's name was Vashti. He calls for her and the Bible says that she refused his plea and did not obey. Now there's different ideas and theologians that, that have different concepts as to why she refused. Some say she was a rebel. Others say she didn't want to be paraded in front of these drunken men. Uh, all I know is that it really upset the king. It, it ticked him off and it, it really got his advisors worried really, really, really bad. He, they went to him and said, oh great king, if, if we do not do something about this action of Queen Vashti, then the rebellion that's taking place in the king's palace uh, will start to spread throughout the land. And next thing you know, every wife is going to be rebelling against her husband. we got to take care of this. And so the king kicks Vashti out of the, the castle and removes her from queenship. And, and, and I don't know all the intricates and uh, the, the smart preachers and theologians can get into all the details. But here's kind of what I got out of that. Uh, the, the, the enemy is afraid of the power of just one young person. One person standing up against the government system and refusing to do something uh, that they tell him to do uh, got everybody stirred up. One young person. uh, Let me just tell every young person in Wisconsin uh, that the devil is afraid of just one. And that if I leave Wisconsin and I don't get all 900 you, but I could get one of you to say I'm going to live right, do right, and be what God has called me to be, then we've got a home run. We can have revival. The devil's afraid of one of you standing up and being a mighty man of God. Well, Brother Tuttle, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I'm afraid to bring a Bible and a bullhorn to school. And, and, you know, I don't have a lot of, I don't Bible quiz and I don't have an all white outfit. I don't know how to make peanut brittle. I, I don't really think I'm qualified to, what, what do I do to have revival? Here's what's so incredible. It's not what Vashti did. It's what she didn't do. Let me tell you, the devil is just afraid of what you refuse to do as he is what you do. I'm glad you dance, but I want to know, are there some things you don't do? Are there some places you don't go? Are there? Come on, the devil's afraid of one young man saying, I'm not going to laugh at that joke. I'm not going to participate in that party. I'm not going to partake of that. I ref- I'm going to, come on, I'm going to hold on to my purity. The devil's afraid of one that'll just say no. You can make a difference by what you don't do. Say, oh, that's easy for you to say, you pastor and preach in HYC. No, 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 no. I, I, baby doll, I, I was raised in Amsterdam. And, and if you think Wisconsin's bad, uh, you, you got to go visit where I was raised. Where I was raised, drugs are legal. All of my friends, when they turn 16, go to prostitutes. You can pick them out from behind a window. Man, woman, mix. I grew up on, in Amsterdam in the Netherlands as a missionary's kid. My my entire, from the time I was 17 months till the time I was 17 years of age. Young people, I got, when I, I, and, and I didn't have a youth group. Well, I did, I had my sister. It was me and my sister. So there was no dating. We, we're not from West Virginia. We, it was just, we didn't have holiday youth convention. 
We didn't have youth camps. We didn't have, you're like, oh, man, all we've got is 900 men. I'd have given my left foot to have 90, I'd have, to have nine young people. There was nothing. There was no camp meetings uh, all by myself. I'd go to high school. When I was in junior high school, the, all the guys, the girls, everybody, after gym class, they stripped down, got into a room with spigots in it, took a shower. And I had to say no. And you know what? They made fun of me. When I got my first job at McDonald's at the age of 15, uh, they found out I was a virgin. Nobody was a virgin. Uh, it was their mission to take it. I'd be getting dressed uh, to go in uh, and work and put it on my, my, my shirt and they would send girls in without clothes on to take my virginity. But I want to tell you something uh, that even though I lived in a world where everyone around me did, did smoked pot and did drugs and you could buy beer at 16, you could get hard liquor at about the same age, just tell them you was buying it for your mom. Uh, all of them lived that way. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something young people, I didn't. Uh, I've never smoked a cigarette. Uh, I've never drank a drop of alcohol. I've never done marijuana I've never done alcohol I was a virgin on the night I got married you say well are you up there bragging yeah I'm bragging on the goodness of God to tell you that if I can live for God in Amsterdam you can at least get up on your feet in Wisconsin and say I can live for God here don't come with your excuse about how you can't do it, baby. There's somebody living your life a whole lot harder somewhere else that is. I wonder if I got a young man that's just going to stand up, give God praise, and say, I got a maid of mine. Can I get a mighty woman of God to rise to your feet and with your hands begin to let the devil know I'm going to stand for something. There's some things I'm not going to do. There's some places I'm not going to go. I'm going to live for God. I tell you what, that wouldn't even scare a little baby devil, much less the devil. I said, can I get somebody to put their hands together and let hell know you ain't having me. My mind's made up. My mind's made up. I'm going to serve God. I said, I'm going to serve the Lord. And as we know, now the king has no bride and he is in need of a bride. And so he goes, well, some advisor comes up with a plan and they say, great king, we, are, we have this great idea. We're going to go to all of the provinces and we are going to take from them each of the most beautiful girls. We're going to bring them before you and whoever you pick, that will be your bride. I don't know who the man was that came up with the idea, but I know he got a raise. Can you imagine young men? Come on, finally I got some young guys looking at me like, oh, what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. Come on, what if, what, if, what if the bishop of the youth, Jordan Herman, got together and said, you know, well, what's your name right here? The tan suit. Mason. Mason, I've got this idea. I'm going to go to all five sections of the great Wisconsin district. From it, we are going to withdraw the most beautiful women. Then at Holiday Youth Convention on the Friday service, we will bring them before you and you can pick. You'd be like, bring it on, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. I'll pay triple registration. All y'all other dudes like, yeah, you would too. That's a good plan. Get, he's like, where's my ring? Put the stamp on it. That's go. And so they do. They go into the various provinces where they begin to find young girls. It is here that Esther is discovered. Now, if there's ever been a purpose in your Bible, a person, I should say, in your Bible that had an excuse not to fulfill her purpose, it's her. Her mother and father have been murdered. She is an orphan. She has really no history or heritage. She's just a, a nobody. But she is pulled from this and brought to the palace. Let, let me just talk to, to somebody in the house tonight. That you say, you know what, I, 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 my dad's not a preacher. My, my mama's not, not, not a Sunday school teacher. Matter of fact, I don't even know, know, know who they are. But this, this little girl lets you know that God isn't looking at your pedigree. He's looking at your purpose. God's not looking at your family tree saying, well, you're related to so and so and so and so and so. You can be used by God. No, it doesn't matter if your dad's a painter or a preacher. It doesn't matter if you don't even, maybe you don't even know who your mother is. But a little Esther can let you know that he can. And use you. 
Come on, some of you sitting there looking at me like you just waiting on God to call your lucky. No, baby. There's somebody in this room. They wake up every morning wondering if they're going to get breakfast. Saying, I don't know how God's going to do it, but he can use me. He's just looking for a young man, a young lady that will raise their hands and say, Lord, I am available to you. Come on, I said your pedigree is not an excuse. Your pet, let, let me go a little further. It's also not a ticket in. Come on, I, I meet some of y'all, and it's like, hey, man, my name's Matthew Tuttle. It's like, hey, hey, my name's, you know, well, well, you know, well, I am uh, Lee Stone King's best friend's barber's neighbor's uh, best friend's uncle who one time got a sweat, a drop of Billy Cole's sweat on his handkerchief, and I got that handkerchief. My dad is the president. My dad is the, who cares who your dad is? I mean, I got a great heritage, and that's grand and dandy, and I love it. But some of you think that because dad is so-and-so, you don't have to pray. Some of you think that... The, because your mom is a Sunday school teacher, you're just automatically going to get the class. That's not how this works, baby. I said that's not how this works. Whether your dad's the general superintendent uh, or come on, uh, or the general president of the United Pentecostal Church of the Netherlands, I've still got to get up uh, and I still have to dance. Uh, I still got to pray. Uh, I still got to fast. Uh, I've still... I wonder if I got a multi-generational. Get up on your feet, clap your hands uh, like you're a sinner that's saved by grace. Uh, if you could give him a shout uh, like he brought you from a mighty long way. Uh, oh, you ought to shout uh, like your great-grandmama did when she got set free. Uh, you ought to shout uh, like your daddy did when he got set free from nicotine. Uh, that's who you are. So he brings her to the palace where she prepares herself. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants to use you. It is there that she begins to prepare herself to go before the king. Her cousin Mordecai has told her, don't tell anybody that you're a Jew. Keep your identity a secret. As, he, as she goes before the king, the Bible says that when he saw her, it was a love at first sight. They gave me a pretty good introduction, but they missed my favorite part. And that is that I am a love at first sight expert. I'm a professional at love at first sight. The year being 2003, the city... Nashville, Tennessee, the setting North American Youth Congress. I was single and searching. I had my camo on to go hunting. That means a nice suit and tie. I had the, I had the, the spray. You know how they put deer urine on themselves? Crazy people. I didn't put deer urine. I had the clear bottle of Tommy Hilfiger. Y'all don't even know why it is, and that's why you're still stalking her on Instagram. But go get you, come on. That's, you go get you some of that clear bottle of Tommy Hilfiger. And, and I'm telling you, I was ready. Every, every service, it was. <laughs> I'm going out there. And I remember, now this was before cell phones. This was before Facebook. This was before you, had, you could stalk and you had to talk. You know what I'm talking about? Like men had to be men. It was back in those days. And I remember standing there after. I was standing there at North American Youth Congress. I can't think of a better place to go fishing. Prime place. Thousands. And th hey, there ain't, hey, y'all laughing. Ain't nothing wrong with looking. As long as you're looking in the right place. I'll say that again. I said, there ain't nothing wrong with looking. And if I was looking, you know, I'm not, but if I was single, 
and I was a young man looking for a girl, you know where I'd be looking? Let me start with where I wouldn't look. I wouldn't be looking on the back row with some chick too cute to even shout. I would want myself a girl that was up in the front uh, shouting her hair down. Uh, I w- if I was a girl, I'd want a dude that wasn't too cool to shout sitting there like he's too cool watching a football game. Uh, baby. If he can't get excited about the God that made him, I don't care how many snow cones he can afford. He's the wrong one. If Matter of fact, let's say this. If he hasn't got up once in this message and clapped his hands, check him off the box. Send him a text. Unfriend him. Get rid of him. That's not the guy you go for. So we had powerful church. And I'm in the hall after church. What I love about Youth Congress is, is that after church you can buy popcorn in the, in, the, in the halls, you know, in the concession. So I had myself a big old bucket of popcorn and my buddy Dean was sitting there eating it. And it's exit time. People are walking out. And I'm eating popcorn. And then I saw her. I didn't know her name. I just knew her last name was about to change. <laughs> I, 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 no joke, you can ask him. I hit Dean. I said, Dean, see that girl right there? He said, yeah. I said, I'm going to marry that one. Yep. So I pursued her. I conquered her. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am King Tuttle with four children, a horse, a donkey, and a goldfish. You're welcome. And I won't tell you, it's the greatest life. I've got, I said I live the greatest life. Yeah, there's some, there's some bumps in the road. We've been married 17 years. There's some hard times. But I'm going to tell you, compared to the world, I live a life that's amazing. I've got a beautiful wife. I've got beautiful children. I've got a home. I've got bread on my table. We've got peace in our family. Because this works. This Jesus name, one God Bible stuff works. You try it. Don't you marry. I'm off my notes, but don't you marry somebody that doesn't love the truth. Don't love marry somebody that doesn't love righteousness and worship and holiness. Don't do it. Paul said, I'm going to stay right here because here's where you live. Paul said, Don't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. I take it a little further. And I say, don't be unequally yoked together with an underbeliever. Because some of you are like, well, yeah, she spoke in tongues and she's got long hair. Let's get married. No, no, no. You need to marry somebody that has your faith level. I don't know how many times Michelle and I are driving down the road. (laughs) And we'll be talking about people because that's what we do. We'll say, man, I remember when they were dating and they were dating. If he'd have just married her, man, they'd be amazing. But she's miserable because she married some dude that was really cool. But her faith was for missions. And his faith was for money. Not saying either or wrong. I'm just saying they're not the same level. And you're going to be frustrated if you're on fire for God, young lady. And you're a worshiper. And you want your life to revolve around the church. And you marry some dude that cares about football and misses church for it. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying he's probably not the right guy. So find your guy. Self, a guy that loves Jesus. Find your one that prays. Find your... If you want to be a missionary, don't settle for a painter. If you don't, come on, if you want to be a painter and support your local church, then that's what the level you need to marry at or you'll be angry at each other. (laughs) 
clap a little bit because I'm on. <laughs> Baby, I do this for a living. Pentecostal couples coming into my, and they just married wrong faith levels. So girls, keep your eyes peeled on these altars. Watch what they do when the word's going forth. How they talk, how they treat you. Come on, somebody. A man of God ain't going to try to go too far. Well, we went ahead and set boundaries. Hold on. He should have came in with boundaries. It shouldn't even be discussion. We don't, there's just some things he doesn't do that he does. Hey, young men, it's your responsibility. The Bible says you're not to touch them. I'm off my notes, but I'm in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. You're, you got to keep your hands off. You got to keep your mind pure. You got to keep your... All you're going to have are regrets, regrets, regrets. Love at first sight. Look at your neighbor and say, "Woo, that was preaching. Look at your other neighbor and say, I'm actually going to put something in the offering tomorrow night. Woo. She becomes queen and she's a great queen. At one point she even saves the king's life until finally the, the news arrives of, a, arrives of a devious plan conjured up by a wicked man by the name of Haman. He wants to kill all the Jews. Remember, he doesn't know she's a Jew. Mordecai, her cousin, receives word and rents his clothes. He sends word to Esther in verse 8. He, he gave a copy of the writings of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them. Show it unto Esther. He said, declare it unto her and charge her. That means tell her or command her that she should go into the king to make supplication unto him and make a request before her people. She, the, the man of God in her life looked at her and said, I know why you're here now. Note this. She was the queen. She had the position. But the position was not the mission. Let me say that again. She had attained the position of queen. She was powerful. There was nothing that you could do or be that was higher than what she was. But the position was not the mission. The reason she had the position was to fulfill her mission. Mm. Let me just tell you this. Don't pursue positions. Pursue the mission. And if God puts you in the mission, in the position, know this. The only reason you're there, the only reason Matthew Tuttle's on this stage is to do what God has called me to do. So how do I get, how do I know when I'm the king, how do I know that when I'm at the top of my game, the pinnacle of my success, how do I know what my purpose is? Here's the key. She had a man of God that even though she was the queen, she was still submitted to God's man in her life. Let me, let me go a little further and say, I know you speak in tongues and you can do it backwards and make it sound like Arabic. But I don't care how fancy your speaking in tongues is, how cute your Holy Ghost twirl is. If you don't have a preacher, if you don't have a man of God, if you don't have a pastor, you will never fulfill your purpose. Come on, the greatest gift God gave you outside the Holy Ghost was a pastor. A pastor to tell you, hey, I know why you're here. I know what you need to do next. I'm going to stay right here. I said, if you want to, how many of you want to fulfill God's purpose in your life? Come on, then you need to get under your pastor and say, Pastor, help me out. Tell me what I need to do next. And when he says, I need you to clean the bathrooms, you don't say, I'll pray about it. Matter of fact, you don't ever say that. If your pastor says, I want you to teach Sunday school, well, I'm going to pray about it. What did you think? He didn't pray? No, he prayed. When you was a little kid, we taught you this little song. It went like this. I'm in the Lord's army. Let's do that again. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes. Say it again. Yes. Say it again. Teach the Sunday school class. Clean the bathrooms. Lock up the building. And if you'll just start saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You'll save your generation. 
I said you'll save your generation. Our generation isn't doesn't need more celebrity worship leaders. Our generation doesn't need another TikTok star. Our generation needs an Esther that'll get under her man or woman of God and say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. God will elevate and he will change your life. If you've got a pastor, you ought to put your hands together. If you've got a man of God, if, man, if you've got a, a pastor's wife, you ought to go home, young lady. Ah, let me preach. I'm just off my notes. I, I don't care. I really don't. Young lady, you've got a pastor's wife. You ought to text her right now after church. Say, how can I help you and how can I assist you? My wife gets out of her car. There's five young ladies and they rotate. They're there every service. They just help her. How can, can I carry your purse? Can I serve you? You know what I've watched? Those five in the last ten years, seven years, I'm sorry. Those, that five, it's probably about 40 of them now. Every one of them that's moved on. They've gotten married. They've got, I don't have problems out of them. They're blessed. God has poured out his spirit. Some of them are preacher's wives. Some are millionaires. Some are doing amazing things in life because they learned the power of submission. Oh, it's quiet in the house. I knew it was because the devil hates when we talk about submission. Because, baby, if you got long, uncut hair, but you ain't submitted. a matter of fact, if you've got long, uncut hair and you've never offered to help your pastor's wife, what's the point? Get in there. Serve. Love. Help. Don't make her carry the baby by herself. Don't make her be the last one that leaves cleaning up the chairs. Get in there and help her. Get in there and serve her. I'm in the Lord's army. He says, you've got to go. I'm, I'm, I'm speeding, but it's going to be a little while. Sit down. I, 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 31 minutes, I'll, I'll go 50. That's about half the time of a football game, right? Ooh, sorry. I, I don't want to get on that, God. But you can't find your purpose on your own. I don't need nobody telling me what to do. Ooh, have fun in hell. Because that's exactly what the devil said. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. The devil was a socialist. Equal. That's what he said. All right. I got to keep going. She replies and says, all the king's servants and people of the provinces, verse 11, know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king of the inner court, who is not called, it, shall be put to death, except to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in these 30 days. Preacher, I'd love to do what you're saying, but... If I do it, it's going to cost me something. It's going to cost me something. You'll know it's God when it's got a price tag and you flip it over and it says your life. That's how you know it's God's purpose. Mordecai writes back and he says, send this little note to her. He says, P.S. You're a Jew too. He said, I know you got your little robe on. <laughs> and I know you got your servants and your cute little tie and your nice little suit. And you got your little dance. You sing up on the praise team and you're all cute. But don't forget where you came from. I know you're in the Marriott now. And I know you got air conditioning. And I know everything's nice. And, and you feel good. And, and you look good. And, and, and you know, I, but, but, but don't forget. Don't forget where you came from, young people. We can never forget where we came from. We didn't come out of the Marriott. I said we didn't come up out of air conditioned padded pews. This thing it came from sacrifice it came with blood and death it came with life given to God don't you forget I know you got your robe on but you're a sinner saved by grace why are you dancing like that brother tell I remember I remember what I deserved heaven hell was my destiny but grace was my mercy so I I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to 
going to bless him because I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me. Ooh, he delivered me out of all my fear. Ooh, taste and see. You look at your neighbor and say, don't forget who you are. Look at your other neighbor and say, you're a sinner saved by grace. She replies back to him and says, gather together the maidens. I'm not going to eat or drink for three days, night or day. I will fast and prepare. Then she says, and if I perish, I perish. If I die, I die. You know what I've found? You haven't found a reason to live until you have a reason to die. Is this just your daddy's religion? Is this what you do because it's cool and in right now? Because the day is coming where it's going to be more than just a feel good, ooh, I got, they sang my favorite song. This has got to be more than just cool lights and stages and sweet little sermons. It's got to get into the fiber and the DNA. And you can't just know the truth. you got to love it. Because if you don't love the truth, you will be given over. you got to love this thing. you got to love the gospel of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. You've got to love separation and holiness and righteous living. You've got to love it. Love it, love it, love it. If I perish, I perish. Once she, was, once she started looking beyond the castle and she realized her purpose was beyond the four walls of that place, she said, I'll give my life for that. The reason some of you won't give your life is because you're trapped up in the politics and in the, 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 the church culture. Why don't you just lift up your eyes and look on the fields? You'll give your life for it. You'll give your life for it. She doesn't just jump the gun. She prepares herself, makes ready. And then the day arrives after she has prepared and been patient. She must now enter into the throne room of the king. I can imagine the night prior to her entering into the throne room. I doubt she slept any at all. Butterflies flopping around inside that stomach. She woke up the next morning. She prepared to go before the king where she would plead the case for over a million people. I can imagine as she put on her robe and began to fix her hair that hands were trembling, her mouth dry, not because she hadn't drank, but because there was this grip of nerves that got all over her. And she, finally she prepares herself and starts the, the walk down the long corridor. And there before her is the, the dorms, enormous. They had never seen bigger than they did that day. As she arrived at the door behind which the king and his council sat, she could hear, hear the chatter of him and his advisors, perhaps laughter. She lays her hand on that heavy door and I know what the devil said. You don't have to do this. No one will ever know. Turn around. You've got it good. You've got a great life. You've got money. You've got everything you need. If you go in there, you're going to die. They're going to kill you. They're going to make fun of you. Everybody's going to look at you. You're breaking the law. Who do you think you are? You're so full of pride. And she drops her hand and begins to turn. And then it hits her. If I don't push this door open, it's not just me, but every little girl and boy, every man and mother, grandmother and grandfather, aunt and uncle, those people I was raised with and their families extended and millions of faces start streaming before her. And before she has much time to consider an alternative, she, she quickly puts her full body weight against the door. The door swings open and... And an advisor sees her and taps his servant who taps another and all heads as quickly as she entered. As time goes by, it turns to her until finally 
Someone taps the king and the silence of the room catches his attention and his eyes pivot to the young lady standing in front of him. And there is Esther. Against the law. Rebelling. The last queen did the same thing. He looks at her and the Bible says he reaches down and he grabs mercy. And he holds to her the golden scepter. And young people, I'm left with this question. Why does she get to live for doing the same thing Vashti did? Vashti was kicked out for rebellion. Esther gets to live. What's the great theological answer? I don't know other than I'm, I know God. And it had to be this. He knew her better than he knew her. He had a relationship with Esther. It had to be that he knew the girl's heart. As he looked down at her, he said, I know you, Esther. I know that you wouldn't have come here of your own volition, that it's not self-grandizement or ambition that's driven you to this place because last night we were on the phone and we talked all night long and, and we go out and ride sometimes and then there's all those times you call me up and, and you just tell me about your dreams and there's those times that we go to, you know, we're on the phone and, and, and we had to get the, the, the unlimited minute plan because we would be on the phone and, and I'd say, you hang up, no, you hang up, no, you hang up, no, you hang up, no, and, and then, and we'd fall asleep on the phone and, 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 and then there were those times when, when she said, King, I don't even want to eat. I just want to be with you. And she, she told her about his heart. And he looked down in the eyes of that girl. He knew her dreams. He knew everything about her. He said, I know you too good that I would kill you. So I'm going to give you mercy. Let me tell you, young people, what sustains you when it comes time to do what God has called you to do. You've got to have a relationship with God. It's got to be more than 15 seconds over your Cheerios. Thank you, Jesus, for this food. Bless to my body you've got to have some nights uh, where you push that plate away uh, and you don't go to sleep because you get down and you just say I love you God uh, I worship you uh, and you wake up the next morning with your head on your pillow uh, knees still on the floor uh, there's got to be altar calls uh, where you don't just come and stand uh, but that you come and stay uh, there's got to be meetings uh, where you lay on that floor and say I'm not getting up uh, until he knows my heart what sustains us is relationship. As I conclude, I do so with an illustration. For I've brought you to Holiday Youth Convention in the form of a nail. You are this nail. This is you. What's this? A nail. Uh -huh. Is there anybody from Texas here? Let's try a girl. You this is you. What's this? Me? Yeah, give it five. Give it up for the girls. One zero. She has some southern blood in her, no doubt. You are the nail. I've also brought your relationship with God. It's, it's this four by four. This four by four represents, and it is, your relationship with God for the redemption score. What is this? Uh, my relationship with God. One, one, give it up for the boy. Another good Texan. You're welcome anytime. That's your relationship. What's this? And you have to get into to God. I've brought the solution that will help this. Ooh, nobody's shouting now. All of, us, all of a sudden it was, ooh, I don't know what he's talking. Yeah, hey, what did I tell you? It's going to cost you something. It's going to hurt a little bit. But if you have a desire and you want to get in, guess what? You can. My God, I should have brought the senior citizens from Texas. 
they at least get up and pat their left toe. Y'all looking at me. I guess y'all ain't never been down in the water in the name of Jesus. I, I guess in Wisconsin, the water's so cold, it don't feel good coming up knowing your sins have been remitted from the mind of God. Maybe speaking in tongues up here ain't like speaking in tongues because when I came up, I wish you could look over the rear view mirror of your life and say, I I remember what it was like to go down in the water and have my sins remitted. Ooh. <laughs> Look at your neighbor say I'm in. Look at your neighbor say I'm in. Look at your other neighbor say I got the Holy Ghost and I am in Christ. And it's grand and dandy that you're in. I, I love and celebrate the great accomplishment. There's one question that the illustration Demands that I ask of you. Why are you in so shallow? Because it looks to me like you could go a whole lot deeper. It looks to me like you could push and push and get to this place back here where no eye has seen or ear has heard. You could get to a realm where God's depths are immeasurable. You could get to a place where there is no end if you could just push. But, but, but you're not. You you're celebrate shallow. You're satisfied with just, just being in. That's good. I spoke in tongues in a couple years ago and I danced around the altar last youth camp and, and I'm in but I want to know why. Why? Perhaps the answer is in the illustration. That's why. It's easy to get out. You can come to HYC. Shikamo shy, kick the devil in the eye. Ooh, yeah, man, I'm living for God. This is good, man. Yeah, God, that's great. But oh, hold on, man, it's Monday. I got to go to school, Karen, all that's around it. And come on, somebody. And you got two different lifestyles. You got two different wardrobes. You got two different vocabularies. It's just, it just depends. Hey, dog, what's up, man? Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, 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 what you playing? You know, Tupac's not even dead. That's all. I saw him the other night. I get to you. And then you bump into, ooh. Pastor, oh, the word of the Lord is upon Whether you wear skirts or pants just depends on where you go. You got to fix your hair a certain way to hide things. That's all right. I'm not preaching to please you. You're shallow. You can come in on Sunday night. And you can be holy and happy and shout and dance. But then you live like the world the rest of the week. And then you come in and, and you're in and out. Shout. But what you don't realize, where's, where's my buddy? Where's Luke? Get up here. What you don't realize, hey. Can you sign standing? I can. Do you mind signing standing up? There you go. Walking and talking at the same time. Here you go. You stand upon it so the people in the back, they're the ones that really need to see it. Some of them haven't stood the entire time. And it's fine and dandy. You're shallow, but no one knows. Nobody knows that you don't pray. Nobody knows that you've got it figured out how to get your DMs to auto-delete. Nobody's got it figured out. You, you know how to erase the browser history. You, you know you, you've got it all figured out. You can get around the parental controls. Nobody knows that you don't really fast. All they see is the outside. But what you don't realize is that while you're shallow and satisfied to be so, there's some valuable things that dangle on you. I brought them with me. This is your, this is your ministry. It's fragile for it's in the infant stages for my congregation this evening, our young people, whose ministries are in the womb of preparation being formed but once it's birthed 
matured and grown, even as a young minister, your generation and your ministry will impact your generation like no other ever has. Under the sound of my voice and the divine assignment sent by God that he has given to me for you this evening, young man, young lady, is that in this room there are men and women of God whose hands will lay upon the sick and you will see thousands come to life. You will see dead rays. You will see the dumb speak. You will see the lame walk. You haven't seen it yet, but you dream about it. You've never witnessed it, but you feel it. You hear things and dream things that are bigger than anything you've ever heard. It's God in one day. One day it'll happen, but it's in the womb of preparation. It's God hanging this life-altering, world-changing ministry, and it dangles. It dangles on you. But that's not all. You didn't come here alone. You're part of a youth ministry. And that youth group you're a part of, yeah, I know, yeah, there's just three of you. Maybe you're large and you're 30, but that's not large. 30? That's nothing. You're on the infant, the beginning, the ground level of a ministry that will impact your city, your state, and the world. You are part of... You need to look around in this room and start planning how you're going to have your youth conference in this room. Come on. Great for a state rally, but your youth group should be 900. And it will be. I said it will be. But he chose you to put you as part of the founding member, to put you at the beginning. You're valuable. That's why when you're, come on, that's why you need to be present every time there's youth prayer meeting. That's why you need to be present every time there's a youth fast and a youth fellowship. Oh, I'm not important. Nobody cares about me. That's a lie from the pit of a damnable hell. You're so important. He puts you in on the ground level. You're so important. You're part of the infant fragile stages and when you don't show up to youth prayer we miss you and when you don't come up to the altar and worship with your youth group it hurts us all because one day young ladies will come in with bandages wrapped around their wrist where they tried to commit suicide they'll get I know I've preached longer than I will. I won't preach this long again, but I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Tarakashai, that there's youth groups in this room, represented in this room, that are the key to revival in Wisconsin. You're the key to the revival in this. And it hangs itself. I've just got one more. It's really the reason I preached this 48 minute message. I care about your ministry and I believe it. I care about your youth group and what I said. I said under the unction of the Holy Ghost. But I've got a 10 year old little girl. An 11 year old little boy. I've got 145 kids under the age of 10 that I pastor. And you know what? I've learned. I've learned. They don't look at me as cool anymore. My, my, my cool factor has faded. The bald spot. I'm not their hero anymore. You know who my 10-year-old ten little, ten little girl's hero is? You. She looks at you. And I wish you could hear the conversation we have getting ready for church. Mommy, put my hair up like so-and-so. 
Mommy, I want to wear a dress like so-and-so has that dress, and it's always a teenager. It's always one of you. You know how that little boy wants to play basketball? Because you play basketball. And out of the corner of his eye, I watch him. As you sit and don't respond to the word of the Lord, I see him sit and not respond to the word of the Lord. And whatever tie you wear, if it's a skinny tie, he wants a skinny tie. If it's a fat tie, he wants a fat tie. If you got pointy shoes, I got to buy pointy shoes because he's fragile. She's fragile. You say, oh, well, I'm not that important. That's a lie. There's two little brown eyes that look at you. There's two little blue and green eyes. They look up at you from a Sunday school department. And they say, what you do, I'll do. How you worship is how I worship. And they hang themselves. I said they hang themselves. <laughs> but look at you go. Look at you, boy. Yeah. You, you got it going on, man. Shallow and holding it together. You the man. You the girl. You carnal. What you don't realize is there's this bag. And it's filled. It's filled with weights. And it's filled with sin. Prepared, tailor-made specifically and customized to you and he's filling at that adversary the devil is a roaring lion I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some stuff in here I'm gonna get mom and dad to get divorced it won't even be their fault see because not everything in the bag is your fault some of it's just gonna happen but it'll take them out and they'll blame themselves for it and they'll, they'll cuss me and they'll walk away and I want to get it. I'm going to get it to the place where they think about suicide. And then I'll get them on pills. Oh, when I get them on pills, I'll get them on drugs. And I'll have them, I'll have them watching things. And, and, then, and then when they're so high one night, I'll get them into alcohol. I'll get them in the back seat. They'll make, they'll make this mistake. <sighs> That'll get them. But I've got to be sure. I've got, I'm going to get them caught up. You know, they're going to know. They won't know anything about the book of John, but they'll know everything about the latest sports stars and they'll know fashion and they'll know football. They'll never read their Bible, so I'll get them trapped up in carnality. I'll get them trapped up in worldliness. They'll be watching things that I'll ingrain because what you watch over and over and over and over and over is what you do. Preacher, I don't know why my, me and my girlfriend had sex. I'll tell you why. Because it's what you watch over and over and over and over. Don't tell me you can keep your purity without keeping your eyes. You've got to turn it off. <laughs> the day arrives. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna hang it on him. I'll take him out, but but I'm not gonna take him just now. See, the bags prepared, and the things are are ready that for your destruction. Some of you are like, well, it ain't happened to me, but it will happen because he will trade years of your life for one moment. I'll say it again. He will trade years for a single second. He's not going to take you out when there's little to gain. He'll let you get as much on you until you lose you and everything. But the day will arrive, the fateful day of destiny that determines your true spirituality will come. The day of weight and reckoning and it will be hang, hung upon you. And then your world will begin to rock and your world will be begin to shake and your world will fall to the ground and there there will be pieces of everything that they're doing God oh God Edith Edith I'll help you daddy will help you preacher oh God please tell me you can put it back together yeah, yeah I, can, I can put some of it back together but it'll never be the same She'll always be scarred by a young man that faked his worship. He'll always be scarred. Sure, there's mercy that can put you back together. But mercy doesn't cover the memory. You'll be... So tonight... Tonight, it's your... It's your choice. 
If you're not going to get in all the way, bub, don't go. No, no. Don't you do it. Don't you do it unless... The altar's open. But don't you come up and patty cake. Don't you come and stand and look at your friend. I want you to run up to this altar and make up your mind. Lay down on your face and say, I'm going in so deep. I'm going in further. I've got to go because something, someone is hanging on you. Your face ought to be on the floor. Your knees in the carpet. You ought to find a place and say, God, there's some convictions that are going to be born out of this conference. There's some convictions that are going to come out when I get up off this floor. It's going to be different than it was. That's okay, praise team. If y'all want to come up here and kneel, that's fine. But we don't need music. We need men of God and women of God to raise their voices right now. Raise your voice. Karabasada. I don't need a song to crutch me in. I need my voice to push me in. Drive it in. You ought to pray louder than your neighbor. You ought to pray so loud that hell can hear you. You ought to lift your voice to the decibel level that destroys the doubt, that destroys the spirit of compromise, complacency. Come on, somebody's hanging on you. There's a ministry down dangling on you. There's a life dangling on you. There's a revival that's hanging on you. Uh, someone is hanging. That's it. Nobody's praying with nobody. Come on. You don't need your friend. You need you. There's some words you need to say. Come on. That you can't say. That nobody can say for you. Uh, there's a prayer that somebody needs to pray. Uh, that nobody can pray for you. Uh, you'll pray for each other in a minute. Youth pastors go ahead. Pastors go ahead. But every young person. Uh, come on. If you're 18 years or younger. Uh, your eyes are closed. And your mouth is open. Uh, and there's some words you're saying. Uh, there's some promises you're making. Uh, come on. There's some repentance that's taking place uh, as God uh, come on shows you the value of who you are uh, in the kingdom of God uh, he's raising up an army young men uh, he's raising up an army young lady uh, an army of men and women uh, if I perish uh, go ahead and let me die if it takes my life go my life you can have uh, but I'd rather die living for purpose uh, than live for emptiness I'd rather die fulfilling my destiny than live and it all be empty. God, use me. Don't you get up till you're speaking in tongues like you never have. Come on, it needs to be more than the chatter that come on that's frequently comes across your lips. It needs to be more than the redundant sound you make. And there needs to be a well of new and fresh water that begins to bubble up out of your belly. There it is. 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 Zion is beginning to travail and revival is being born in Wisconsin's young people. Let it come alive, let it come alive, let it come alive in you, young man. Let it come alive, let it come alive in you, young lady. Ooh, harayetarabasa.
In a minute, you're going to hit a wall in prayer. You need to push through it with your voice. Come on, there's a volume level that we need to get to. Come on, come on. There's a, there's a wall that hell has put up in your prayer life. You, you, you're waiting on a song. God's waiting on a prayer. Pray. Pray. The praise beat team ain't going to be there in your high school. They're not going to be there in your bedroom when the demonic forces come. You've got to learn she didn't sing. The Bible says she went to prayer and fasting. Prayer, I'm not against singing, but right now, what prepares you, come on, to go in before the king is prayer. Come on, if you can't pray in public, if you can't pray in this setting, you can't pray in private. Come on, if this setting... It's too hard for you. You're not going to make it. Get down on your knees and learn how to break through right now. Break through. Let the devil hear you pray. Come on, I know we shout our voice out, but can you pray it out? For with fervent prayer, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer and supplication. Supplication is the out loud, fervent pleading with God. You need to get into supplication. You need to get into travail. You need to get into intercession. Come on, that is lifting up your voice. Letting the Spirit, for we know not how to pray as we ought. The Spirit, let it begin to speak with groanings. That's a sound of revival. This is the sound that hell is afraid of. This is the sound your adversary is startled of. Lift up your voice and begin to pray, Wisconsin. Hiyanaba. That's it. Keep praying. Come on. You're entering into a place where God is beginning to speak. There's some things he's going to ask you to give up. You need to commit it right now. Come on. There's some things, some songs, some music, some friends, some clothing, some jewelry. You need to get it out. You need to get it out. Oh, come on. I'm tired of debating it. I'm going to obey. I'm going to submit God to your man. I'm going to submit to your word. I'm going to submit to your spirit. And I'm going to be what God has called me to be. I'm going to do what God has called me to do.
As you feel led, begin to lay your hand on somebody next to you. Come on, God wants to begin to use you in the gifts of the Spirit. He wants to begin, begin to use you right now. Begin as you link up. Come on, I want you to, if you're not going to pray over them with volume, don't lay your hand on them. It'll be discouraging and just make them wonder. But if you will lay your hand and your voice, I want you to lay your hand and let the sound of your voice begin to speak over that. Begin to speak. If you don't know the words to say, you let the Spirit begin to speak through you. Let it happen. Let it happen. That's it. That's it. Come on, Wisconsin. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Woo! Hallelujah! That's it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There it is. There's faith. Uh, the gift of faith. Uh, come on, it's here right now. If you would like to have it, uh, you begin to speak it. I receive the gift that you have for me, God, uh, for my generation. Uh, there it is. God, I open up my heart to the things of the Spirit. Uh, let me see. Let me be led by the Spirit. Uh, let me not be led by my flesh. Uh, let me not be led by my carnality and my thinking. Uh, but, Father, begin to speak to me. Uh, speak through me now there it is uh, don't stop there it is let it flow let it flow let it flow that's it young man uh, that's it there's ministries being birthed uh, there's calling to open businesses and entrepreneurship dreams uh, that are being created right now uh, come on there's callings to intercession in Sunday school uh, there's callings come on to write books and author uh, come on it's happening uh, it's happening the God's calling a young man to pastor God's calling a young lady come on to evangelize. He's opening doors. You're seeing faces unfamiliar to you. It will be answered in time as he calls you to a field beyond this place. He's doing it right now in this room. He's doing it right now in this room. It begins in prayer. It begins in prayer. He calls each of us collectively and individually to this place. This place of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. find one other person and begin to lay your hand on them there's a spirit of encouragement uh, come on you you haven't forsaken the assembling of yourselves together but you've gathered 
Now you've got to exhort one another. So that means encourage. That means you lay your hand on them in strength. Come on, that's been gleaned in this moment of prayer and consecration is going to begin to radiate through you as you become a vessel, a conduit to, through which God, come on, can pour a funnel, which God can utilize to funnel his favor, his blessing. One can put a thousand, two can put ten thousand. Go ahead, go ahead and link up with them. Go ahead and connect. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yes. Yeah.